Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss about the concept of a fraction using some examples. So let us start with a rectangle. And what I proceed to do is to divide this rectangle into some equal parts. Let's say that I have divided this rectangle into nine equal parts. And now what I want to do is I just want to take out three parts from this nine. So this I have represented by shading the three parts here. Okay, so now how can I represent this three parts when I compare it to all these nine? One way to do that is I'll write the number three because I'm considering three parts, right? And how many total parts I have? Nine. So I can say that I'm taking three parts out of nine parts. This is it. So this is what it's just an arrangement that we have come up with in which we are saying that we are just considering three parts out of a total nine parts. Okay. What are these three parts? It's just a part of these nine, right? It's just a part of this nine, which is under consideration. It can be explained in more detail with another example. What I have done is we take another rectangle here. Okay. And then we have divided into six equal parts. And in this case also, we have taken three parts which are colored in purple as shown here. Now, how can I represent these three parts as part of all of this whole rectangle, which has been divided into six parts? So I can first write down the total parts that are taken out, which we are considering, which are shaded. So we have one, two and three. So I'm writing three here. And then how many total parts do we have? It is six, one, two, three, four, five and six. So what we are essentially saying is I'm considering three parts out of six parts. Let us take one more example. So in this case, we have a rectangle which has been divided into four equal parts and we have shaded these two parts as blue. So I would be interested in figuring out how much is these two out of the whole. So in this since I have taken two parts, so I will write it at the top. And how many total do we have? We have four. So what is it that we have done here? We are just simply considering the part of from this whole. Okay. In all the three cases. So having discussed this concept of take, you know, dividing a part it could be anything. It could be a rectangle. It could be anything. It could be even a box of chocolates. It could be just anything that you can believe of. Right? It's just a concept that we have something which we have divided into equal parts and then we are trying to remove things from that those parts. So we are trying to play with that quantity in terms of the divided parts. So now let us try to put a more formal definition for the fraction. So what is a fraction? Now, if you reflect upon what we learned earlier, you can easily make it out that it is nothing but a part of a group or a collection, right? So how do we represent fractions? So we represent fractions into by using two numbers, right? There will be a number which is written at the top. For example, in our earlier case, the first number that we wrote was uh, three and uh, the other number that we wrote was 9. Okay, so this is one fraction, 3 divided by 9. It's not 3 by 9, but you should be pronouncing it as 3 parts out of 9 parts. Then the other one was, uh, we took 3 parts out of 6 parts. And in the third example, we took 2 parts out of 4 parts. So this is how a fraction is represented using two numbers. So now if you just have a close look at it, you can figure out that what do you this number which is down that is numbers 9 number 6 and number 4 that is called as a denominator and this denominator represents the number of equal parts into which the whole is divided and then we have a numerator so numerator is the number at the top so in our case the numerators that we have is 3 3 and 2 and it represents the number of equal parts which have been taken out so in our earlier cases, we shaded this three parts in this example. In the other example also, we shaded three parts which we were taking out. And similarly, we shaded two parts in the third example. So a couple of things to keep in mind is that the whole number or the whole that you are considering must be divided into equal parts. This is very important. 
for us to be able to understand or apply the concept of fraction there and it, is, it should be possible to divide a single group into different parts. So having said that now let us have a look at some more examples which will make us clearer on the concept that we have learned. So what we are supposed to do is we have to write the fractions for the shaded portions in the figures below. So let us try in this case. Now we have to write down the fraction for this figure. So we see that it is a triangle and it has been divided into some parts. So first we always start as a good practice you can find out the denominator. So what is the so how many total parts are there in this. So first you should have a look whether all these parts are equal. A quick look at it shows that yes all the parts are divided equally. So how many parts do we have? We can count 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we got the denominator. It is going to be 4 parts. Now we have to consider the shaded portion. So how many parts we are taking out? We are taking out 2 parts which is like the 3 and 4 in our case. So we can just write 2 here. So this is this this portion right or this this figure is represented by 2 by 4 this is a fraction now let us take the second uh, example in this case we have a rectangle which is divided into nine parts and we have to consider the shaded portions so first we find out what is the total uh, number of parts that are there in the figure number 2 and they are 9 so we got the denominator. Now what what is going to be the numerator? So we just count the shaded portions. So in this case we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. This is unshaded. So this fraction is represented as 8 by 9 with 8 being the denominator, uh, sorry 8 being the numerator and 9 being the denominator. Now in this case this is a different example we have been considering geometric figures here but in this case if you see that we have this tennis balls and we j so so how many tennis balls do we have we have eight tennis balls and out of which four of them are shaded so uh, how, so how do i represent this as a fraction so we have eight total one two three four five six seven and eight so eight becomes our denominator and how about the numerator so we just need to find out the shaded portions so we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we get 4 as the numerator. You can see that this is in figure number 3 the fraction that comes out is 4 by 8. So please remember this is just to emphasize the fact that it's not necessary for us to just take the geometric figures it can be applicable to anything imaginable which you can break down into equal parts in this case we have taken eight tennis balls shapes and then found out that we are simply considering four balls out of eight one so it's just a part of this total eight let us have a look at this figure here four which is a circle and with equal signs so i'm just assuming that all these are equal Right in that case, so how many parts do we have total into which this circle has been divided? So it is 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we get the denominator which is 4. And then what is the part which is shaded? It is 1. So 1 by 4 is the fraction that we get for it. Now let us have a look at some more figures. Okay, so in this case, the key thing that you have to look is do we have equal parts here and yes so we can count out in this figure number fifth how many equal parts do we have one two three four five six seven right it's three three so the denominator is seven and what about the numerator it is one two and three parts are shaded so this fraction numerator is three and the fraction is represented as three by seven now we have the sixth figure in which we are taking flower designs so how many do we have total we have one two three multiplied by four so we have 12 total flower patterns or 12 flowers and how many of them are shaded you can see it's like one two and three so this fraction the numerator comes out to be three the denominator is 12 and the fraction is represented as three by 12. let us take pencils now so we have one two three four five and five so we have the denominator first which is 10 
and how many do we have shaded? I think all of them are shaded, right? All of them are shaded. So we will just take them as 10 by 10. So note that this is also a fraction. Okay, because all of them are shaded. That's what we are taking over here. Now let's take this eighth figure. So how many equal parts do we have in here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Right, let's just count it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So our denominator comes out to be 9. And how many shaded parts do we have? 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I'll just write it again for clarity because this is a tricky one. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this fraction, the numerator comes out to be 4. And we have a fraction that is 4 by 9. So this is how you can understand we come up with fractions. Now let us continue with two more examples here. So in this case we have a flower pattern and all these petals are of equal size. I'll keep on emphasizing the fact that it is important to divide the part or whatever object into equal parts. Whatever object we are considering must be divided into equal parts. So in this case how many petals does this flower have? It has one two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Okay, so our denominator becomes eight. And how about the numerator? So we have one, two, three and four. Four parts are shaded. So we have four by eight. How about this? So in this we have a design which is symmetrical and it's divided into two parts. So there are there is one and two parts. So your Denominator is 2 and this half part is shaded so this becomes 1. So this is 1 by 2. Now this is one more example. What fraction of a day is 8 hours? Now this we have to think basically what so we in a day how many hours do we have? We have 24 hours. Right? So if we see that the day is divided into 24 equal sized hours. So what is going to be our denominator? 24. Okay, and then how many R's are considering? We are considering 8. So 8 becomes our numerator. So the fraction 8 R's is equal to 8 by 24th of the whole day. That is how we will learn about it. And then what fraction of an R is 40 minutes? See now we are considering the next level of denominator. So 1 R, if you remember, 1 R equals is divided into 60 equal minutes right so now that is what we are going to consider so 60 minutes or 60 is going to be our denominator and how many minutes are we considering 40 so we write 40 as the numerator so 40 minutes is nothing but 40 by 60 of an hour you can say like that okay, so having said that let us now do it the other way around that we have a fraction and we need to shade the parts. So we have here in the example 1 by 6. It simply says that we have to shade one part from the 6 parts. You can just take up any one and color it off. I am taking this one. You can take whatever you like. In this one we have to shade one part out of the 4 part. So again I am free to choose any one part. They have not told. So I'm just shading in this part. So this becomes your one, one of four, and this is one by three. So I just have to consider one part amongst this three, and I can choose to shade this part. So this will be my one by three. Some more examples. Now in this case, we have to shade three parts out of this four parts. So you can just select any three parts. I'm taking this one, two, and three. I'm just not doing a very thorough shading but just illustrating the concept of how do we come up with the shading required and in this case 4 out of 9 4 parts out of 9 parts so here we have 9 parts and you can take any 4 parts that you like the numerator is what is going to decide what do we use for shading so 1, 2, 3 and we can take any one as 4 I'll just take this one as 4 parts so this is 4 out of 9 so in the next session, we will learn about representing fractions on a number line.